My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. Hello, I am Flash Isaac and it's beautiful to see you today. You are welcome to episode number 38 of the 120 Days to Jam Physics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be looking at vapors. I promise to make this class as interesting as possible and as beautiful as possible. Now, there are topics in physics that you understand or you just cram or you see as abstract. This is why I came all the way from the future to make you understand these things, not just to cram or to know, to let the thing have impact in your body. From way back, we agreed that physics is the study of matter as it relates to energy. This is not chemistry where we are concerned about the composition, property and uses of matter. No, what physics concerns or cares about is matter as matter relates to energy. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Meanwhile, energy is anti-matter. It does not have mass and it does not occupy space. Waves are energy. Light is an energy. As I am here right now, there is light, a lot of light rays. Now, despite the light, I am still standing. So the light is not occupying space. But if someone else was already standing here, I cannot still take this same position as the person. Moving forward, physics studies matter, which is anything that has mass and occupies space. This matter can exist in various forms. In various nature. So this nature or forms that matter can exist are referred or it's referred to as the state of matter. Now basically at this level, at every time or every given form, uh, time, matter can exist as solid, as liquid, and as Gases. Now, solid, liquid, and gases are the forms or states of matter. And the difference between the solid, the liquid, and the gaseous state of matter is the force of attraction between their molecules. Remember, atom is the unit of any substance. If you break something down, the smallest part of that stuff is atom. The smallest part of anything is atom. But there is a problem with atom. What is the problem with atom? It is very hard or impossible for a single atom to exist on its own. You cannot see an atom standing on its own. No. What happens? An atom combines with another atom. So when atoms combine, they form molecule. So molecule now becomes the smallest part of a substance that is capable of independent existence. Not that molecule is the smallest part of a substance. No, atom is the smallest part. But molecule is the smallest part of a substance that can exist on its own. So it exists independently and still retains the property of that substance. So group of atoms combine to form molecules. Now, every 
substance you see, solid, liquid, and gases, they are made up of these molecules. But for solids, the molecules are so so close together. And because of this closeness of the molecules, solids begin to have shape. It gives them definite shape. In liquids, the forces between these molecules or the molecules are somehow far apart in liquid rather. But for gases, the molecules are so so far apart and they exhibit random motion, right? Because they are so so far apart. This guy does not have definite shape. It takes the shape of being any container. Where am I heading to? Looking at this case of matter, change of state comes to mind, which I have also treated. Matter can change from one state to another. Now, vapors, our topic for today. Vapor is somehow the gaseous phase of a substance. Not just the gaseous phase of a substance. Let me take you to something referred to as triple point. Although there are three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gaseous state, there is a point where a substance can exist in these three states. At the same time, solid, liquid, and gases. It is referred to as triple point. At 0 0.01 degrees Celsius or 273.16 Kelvin, that should be correct. Water exhibits triple point. This is the triple point of water. Water exists in these three stages. Now, look at something else. In physics, when vapor condenses, it becomes liquid. Now, there is a particular temperature where vapor cannot be liquefied irrespective of the pressure. Pressure is force per unit area. So, when a particular temperature is exceeded or a temperature at which this water vapor or vapors rather cannot be liquefied, cannot change to liquid, that is referred to as critical temperature. So, critical temperature is the temperature at which vapor cannot be liquefied irrespective of the pressure. And for water, the critical temperature is 374 degrees Celsius. And when you add 276, sorry, when you add 273, you should get it in Kelvin. Now look at something very, very important. If this is critical temperature and this is a uh, triple point, vapor exists at a temperature below the critical temperature. Vapor exists at a temperature below the critical temperature. And for there to be vapor, there should also be the liquid form of that substance. So, below critical temperature and the liquid form of that substance also being available. So, the gas that is in a liquid at a temperature below critical temperature is referred to as vapor. Now, there is something called vapor pressure. There is something called saturated vapor. There is something called unsaturated vapor. And every other thing you need to know about vapors. I think it's time for a little note. Some persons do complain that they don't see the board clearly, especially when I have writings like this. This video is recorded in 1080p, very high quality. And during editing, I make sure that everything on the board is crystal clear. But watching on YouTube, YouTube will show you a low resolution by default, especially when you don't have a very strong network. Now, if you want to see it as clear as I am seeing it, you go to settings on YouTube and increase the video resolution to 720p or 1080p. You see it very, very clearly. The worst is when some persons they download the videos from YouTube or using some kind of things, I don't know, some apps. Those apps will download these videos in the lowest possible temperature, uh, in the lowest possible quality. So as such, you can even barely see me teaching, left alone the writing. So for your best interest, stream on YouTube and watch in the high quality. You see it well. You spend more, you use more data, but 
it's for your benefit you are learning if i can spend the money record edit upload you are not even paying for the videos so why not spend to watch the videos there are courses like this where you don't get it for free people pay for all these courses even apps you pay thousands monthly but i just feel it's a way of giving back now if this is so uh, air like this when you have dry air and you apply moisture moisture another way of saying you sprinkle water in dry air by the time you sprinkle just a little amount of water in the dry air you notice it becomes water vapor when you sprinkle water or moisture on air that is dry it becomes water vapor now there are some this dry air it has a particular amount of moisture or of water you can sprinkle into it if you sprinkle very small or little amount of moisture or you sprinkle very little amount of water in this dry air that is not really enough for the dry air in that case we said that the water vapor form is unsaturated so this is unsaturated water vapor because the air does not contain the amount of water vapor that it needs by the time you sprinkle this water or moisture in this air to a, an extent that is just enough for the dry air to hold itself we say that that is saturated water vapor water vapor now there is something referred to as vapor pressure vapor pressure in physics pressure is force over area the force you are applying to the area you are applying that force now look at this while lying on the bed my body is applying force on that bed now you see that all my body from head to toe lying on the bed so there is a lot of area so the pressure becomes low because the area is big the bigger the area the lesser the pressure so long the force is constant a situation where it is early morning i say ah a good day let me stand up by the time i stand from all my body being on the bed to standing on only my toes just my two legs holding me you notice that the area has reduced it is now just my legs instead of all my body so the pressure will increase i can sleep for 10 hours 20 hours relaxing but standing for 10 hours becomes so impossible because for the same force which is my body that is applying small area is being there just two legs are holding so the pressure will be very very high now look at the situation where i further reduce the area standing on my toes like this or standing with one finger like this you notice that the area is very small and the pressure is extremely high so i can't even do that for long so pressure depends on area and force if the area is very small there will be so much pressure now for a pipe if a pipe is small like this and the same force of water is coming out through here you will see a lot of water pia, 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 water is shooting out now if the pipe is very wide hose is very wide and you are bringing the same amount of pressure of water you see that the water will just be dropping there's no pressure that is basically the application of pressure in our day-to-day -day life if the exam is four months from now five months from now so you, uh, you still have the same amount of book to read 50 uh, chapters remaining you will be stored in the pressure is still normal by the time exam is three five days from now and you still have that 50 chapters to read which means the area is now small and the force is the same you see the pressure hey i'm not prepared that is the concept of pressure force over area so vapor they also exert pressure because when you are boiling water like this and you see water vapor coming up this part of the water is still liquid why here is vapor so this vapor apply pressure on the liquid part of the substance not just for water for all liquids generally i'm using water because it is a popular example and something you see in your exam so vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by vapor on the surface of the liquid the pressure that this vapor is putting is mounting 
on the surface of this liquid is called vapor pressure. Now, unsaturated air does not contain maximum vapor or does not contain maximum water vapor. By the time this air contains maximum water vapor, it becomes saturated air. Just like solution in chemistry. When liquid is boiling, the vapor pressure is equal to a standard pressure. Now, what is boiling point? Boiling point of any substance is the temperature at which the saturated vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. By the time you have water or you see liquid, once the saturated vapor pressure of that liquid is the same as the temperature of the atmosphere, boiling will occur. So, when liquid is boiling, the vapor pressure is equal to the external pressure. This is true. And for saturated vapor, the number of molecules leaving the liquid is the same as the number of molecules returning. So if this is saturated, the number of vapor or molecule leaving this liquid is the same as the number that is returning. Because it is saturated, it has gotten enough that it wants. But for unsaturated vapor, the number of molecules leaving are more than the ones returning because more molecules are leaving to occupy the dry air. So by the time the air is now dry, then it is saturated. For saturated vapor, the number of molecules leaving a liquid is the same as the number of molecules returning. But when it is not yet saturated, the molecules leaving are more than the ones returning because more molecules are leaving to occupy the dry air. And there is only one factor that affects saturated vapor pressure and that is temperature saturated vapor varies as temperature but not linearly not like this it is not linearly so the variation of saturated vapor pressure with temperature is not linear and the instrument used to measure saturated vapor pressure is barometer with pipette barometer with pipette is used to measure saturated vapor pressure and there are three major applications of vapor. The first one is sublimation. Second is boiling. And third is triple point. Sublimation is a phenomenon where solid changes to gaseous state without passing through the liquid state. If you have ammonium chloride or camphor like this, come back after some time, it has vanished. But look at there, or where it was, it does not get wet, it is still there, which means the solid has vanished. <laughs> that is sublimation. Ammonium chloride can sublime, camphor can sublime. The opposite of sublimation is deposition. Now, boiling is the temperature at which the saturated vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. That is another application of vapor pressure. Then we have triple point. Triple point is the temperature where solid, liquid, and gases they exist together or they coexist. That is something I was to explain earlier in this video. Is this the end of vapors? No. There are so many other things to discuss under vapors. But so long this episode is concerned, we come to the end of this class. In the next class, we shall continue other things. You need to know under vapors. I do hope you found this class interesting. And please feel free to install the Flash Learner Jam application. Then under topics, go to vapors. You begin to see questions and play with it. These videos are 90% teaching classes explanations. Then from the app, you go to after covering every topic, you go to that app, choose that particular topic, and practice questions. You see that you are going to gain a lot and you are going to really enjoy the apps. So that is it for this class. See you in the next episode. Take care of yourself.